Hi, welcome to my fifth installment of um, the Exercises for Riders series. And um, there's a couple of things that I would like to say before I go into the next lot of exercises. Someone that um, knows Lisa was saying to her the other day that she'd seen her looking all silly or stupid or something like that all over YouTube. And um, I'm actually really grateful to Lisa that she has the guts to do some exercises um, in public that she has never done before and that she knows she may not do that well or not perfectly well. I'm quite glad that she doesn't because that actually gives me the chance to correct things because sometimes by correcting I can point out um, general mistakes that people make when they try to do the exercises. So for me that's all good that she uh, doesn't look perfect. The other thing is obviously I don't want people to think that you have to do it perfectly well. Um, you, you just do it as best as you can and you hope that you will improve. The other thing is that someone was saying to me, um, oh but I can't do all those things that you're showing there. And it's not what you can do now, it's what hopefully you will um, learn to do over the next few weeks or months as you as you do the exercises and uh, hopefully you will improve how you do the exercises and that will help to improve your riding. So just give it a try, give it your best shot and um, there's always room for improvement so just go for it. Why is core endurance important? I think there's a difference between just pure core strength, which is the ability to um, build up a certain amount of muscle tension for a short while, and core endurance. Uh, for example, if we're riding for an hour or more, our core must essentially be engaged the whole time to varying degrees. Um, for example, core engagement during downward transitions um, is essential because um, the, if the rider does not see the transitions through to its conclusion by maintaining increased core tension, he or she will collapse and so will the horse um, and it will fall onto its forehand. Why is breathing important? Without continuous breathing, tension will build up in the thorax, head and abdomen and that will make the rider rigid. Also, if you have ever watched a horse being alert, you would have noticed that it will stop chewing and breathing to reduce sound and movement for better listening ability in case of possible danger. So think about what you're telling the horse when you're holding your breath. Um, I personally never used to think much about breathing until I went to, to the uh, to my first um, Mary Wallace Ride With Your Mind clinic and there was someone who had an issue with that. I don't think I've ever personally had a particular issue but um, I would just like to pass on to you that I do think it is very important and while my exercises that I'm going to show you I don't have any particular breathing exercises because I don't think that's necessary, but you're encouraged um, to breathe throughout the exercise. That is really important uh, through any exercise, really. And um, if I tell anyone, um, don't make your eyes pop. That is basically an encouragement to breathe.
We're going to do um, abdominal exercises now and the first one is just a plain straightforward sit up. Lisa is already in the correct position. Gary is ready to help her. Um, what I want you to do Lisa is keep your elbows where they are and keep your chin this far away from you. And now just stand, do a little sit up and yeah, pull up and a bit more if you can. And keep your elbows back right there and down again. And do that a few more times. And in fitness classes, if you want to make it a bit harder, you can put a weight on your chest. Out in the yard, we use cats. <laughs> the next exercise are twisted sit-ups for the oblique abdominal muscles. And it's very important that you breathe during the exercise so I would suggest you breathe in on the way down and out on the way up and if you feel that your eyes seem to pop you know that you're not breathing enough thank you Lisa twist it sit ups with the elbows touching the knees And the next step up from that will be cycling. I'm going to show Lisa how to do that. Lisa, put both knees in the air now. Okay. And now one leg straight down. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And now the opposite elbow goes to the opposite knee. Come up, yeah. One way is to have your legs up in the air, leaning right up, put your hands here, and now you try to touch, when hold, just try to touch your feet, and then you lie down. And you can do it with both hands at the same time, okay? Or you do it just with the one hand, the opposite foot. Yeah, that's the one. And then also, the lower down the legs go, the harder you're making it for your abdominal muscles. Give that a try, and this is too painful. Okay.
100, this is from Pilates. And we move the arms up and down, go a bit faster. And faster. What I do I usually tell the people to count while they're doing it, sets of five or sets of ten, because then they will have to breathe while they're doing it and they can't hold their breath. Okay, the next exercise is the uh, 100, the arms of the 100 and the legs are cycling. So Lisa has never done this before, she just had a brief little test run and she didn't find it very easy. Just get the legs going first and now get the arms and lift your head up. And now try to do the arms twice the speed of the legs. Uh, we have a very steep learning curve here, that's actually very good. So this is only the second time Lisa has done this. When you're doing that exercise, don't think about what your legs are doing, think about what your arms are doing and your legs are just naturally going like that. The next exercise is the bridge. Lisa is already in the basic position for it. Lisa, if you just lift your bottom up now. And to make it a little bit harder, um, we'll um, get Lisa to lift her arms and to scissor the arms. And what I would like Lisa to do now is lift one leg straight up in the air without dropping the bottom.
The next exercise is the plank. Lisa, if you can just go into the plank position. And I'm going to tweak Lisa into place now a little bit. You stay there as you are. But what I would like you to do is bring your elbows a little bit more. There. And now also it's quite important to come up from here. Stick your bottom up a little bit more. And what I don't want is at the moment your back is a little bit saggy in here. Yes! And can you feel how that changes already your contraction? And Lisa is shaking, I don't know whether you can see that in the, in the video, but this is now, she's really holding. Come up away from my finger even a bit more, and have a rest, wash the cat, thank you. The next exercise is the side plank, so Lisa if you just come up. Okay, and then you can... Just it up a little bit to make it a bit more interesting by lifting the arm. Or you can bring the arm through here and flip it up again. And down. Through and up. And what I would like to see, I think, is a little bit of movement in the body as well when you do it. So the rest and see if you can do it. Try again. Okay, and now go through. And I want you to count to ten now while you're doing this, loud, so we can hear it. Loud and loud. Five, four, three, seven, and eight, seven, six, five, ten. Lisa's bottom came up a little bit too high there in the end, but essentially I think you get the idea. The next exercise um, is the plank with one arm up. So Lisa, if you get yourself in the plank position, good. If you can maintain that, that would be really good. And try not to wobble your body. Thank you. 